So, hello, welcome to the second lecture of uh, algebraic number theory or elliptic curves. Well, I hope that uh, the people who are not here today will watch it online and I hope that we didn't uh, lose about 80% of the people. So, um, today we're going to talk about um, torsion points, uh, the group structure and um, some properties of torsion points and two nice theorems. Uh, one of those two nice theorems we're going to prove about, well, half, half, uh, half of it. And the other one we can only cite. So let me repeat a bit. We had our final definition of elliptic curves. That was the following. So we defined an elliptic curve in the following way. We said we have an equation y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus b such that a and b fulfill some equation or su some inequality and a and b are rational numbers. Um, of course we can, only, we can also um, use this definition for other fields, for example for number fields or even um, for uh, finite fields but there we have to be careful with the characteristics. So here we just want to concentrate on rational elliptic curves. So there's also, um, we do not always want to um, uh, uh, make a difference between uh, the equation of an elliptic curves, curve and the actual points on the elliptic curve. So we will also call the following an elliptic curve. where this O is our point uh, at infinity. Wait a minute. Okay, should be okay like this. So, uh, I, I think we didn't give this short form a name. So, in the last lecture we started with a much longer form where we had also something like xy and x squared and uh, um, more terms and we got rid of them by um, changing the variables and now we get this form and we call this short Weierstrass form. There's at least one more way of writing down an elliptic curve that will be useful for us or maybe useful in general, um, which is the Legendre form. Um, 
do I have this number? And so, of course, the nice thing here is that we already have all the roots uh, of the polynomial on the right side. And as you might imagine, if we draw the elliptic curve, we also, we had some cases where it looked like, looked like this, and some cases well, <laughs> where it looked like this. Um, and in this case, um, the uh, the polynomial on the right side has only one um, rational root, and in this case, the polynomial on the right side has three rational roots. And here we see that we have zero, one, and lambda as the three rational roots. So here we are in this case, but what we um, write here is only the one direction, so everything, everything is fine here, everything works out. But what you have to keep in mind is that when we talk about isomorphism, isomorphic elliptic curves, this is not always just a rational transformation of the variables, but it's usually, it usually uses some um, sixth roots of unity or third roots of unity. Uh, I think you saw that on the exercise sheet. I think we had that there. So. Just keep in mind that for transforming elliptic curves into each other, we usually mean over Q bar. So, but this is basically also just a side remark as we will usually uh, have the elliptic curves in this form. <coughs> so now we come to the interesting thing about elliptic curves. <laughs> the fact that we have a group operation. And we had um, on the exercise sheet, I think we had the um, doubling formula and um, some explicit formulae that you will also find in the books. So I hope you all downloaded at least the Silverman Tate book where you can look up all the, um, all the things we need. And now we want to see what we can say about this group operation. Uh, remember that we want to add points by drawing a line through them and then mirroring it down here. So this is P, Q, and this is P plus Q. So what nice properties would we like to have and how do we get them? So first of all, we would like um, to have uh, an, a neutral element, the point at infinity, such that if we have a point and add it to the point at infinity, we get the point itself. What else do we want? 
we want commutativity, so P plus Q should be the same as Q plus P. What else would be nice? Um, an inverse element, so if we have P, we want to find minus P. Well, let's take Q, this is nicer. Here, minus Q, such that Q plus minus Q is the point at infinity. What else do we need? <coughs> um, uh, now I changed the um, numbers, but I think that's okay. Yeah. Well, never mind. So, what is uh, basically kind of uh, a mixture between those two is if the three points lie on one line, then we have P plus Q plus R. Well, I think we, we don't have associativity yet, so we have to put uh, brackets. Then this is the point at infinity. And one last thing that we need is the most complicated thing, associativity. And of course, what, what we also need, but what I won't say now, is that uh, the addition is well defined. So first of all, we have um, a way, uh, an algorithm to compute the point, and the point that results is always on the curve. That's just by definition, so I won't talk about it. And now, we want to see um, what do we have to prove. Is there anything to prove? Is it trivial? Is it very hard? Let's start with A. We only look at the, um, at the algorithm. What happens if we add the point at infinity to P? So this is our P. And um, I'm not sure what I defined um, last last lecture how I defined this, um, but this is basically just by definition, because we defined the point at infinity at the point that intersects the curve at infinity, and also as the point um, that uh, um, well, forget forget the sentence. So this this is basically by definition. Next point. We have uh, we want it to be commutative. So what is P plus Q? Is a line through P and Q, but the line through P and Q will always be the same as the line through Q and P. So this is also okay. C is also almost trivial because we know how to find the inverse. Um, we said if we just mirror a point down uh, by the x-axis, this will be the inverse because if we connect this, then the third point of intersection will, the po will be the point at infinity as we defined it. So we have an act actual um, constructive algorithm how to, how to construct the inverse so we always have it. <coughs> Next one is interesting. If P, Q, and R are on a line, then they add up to the point at infinity. Well, this is also basically just our definition of the addition, because if we draw any line, and if we would add the first two points, this would be the reflection of the third point by the x-axis, which is by the definition just the inverse of the third point. So then this is minus r and minus r plus r will be the point 
at infinity, so this is also okay. Now, what about associativity? I think they also say it in the book. You can either prove associativity of this group law by um, diving very deep into algebraic geometry, or you can write down like three or four pages full of technical calculations of the explicit formulas, which is maybe nice to torture a bachelor student in their page in their bachelor thesis, but definitely probably not something that you would like to do. So this is just something that we believe it. I think you can also um, try to draw some lines and see that they should intersect at the right points, but you would probably need to write, uh, draw it on a large piece of paper because otherwise you don't um, recognize anything. Okay, so what we proved is uh, that's actually a group. So, and now we come to the interesting part because there are things that we can do with groups. Since we can add points to themselves, like P plus P, okay, this is not so easy, Q plus Q, uh, yeah, it's maybe this one, um, two Q, and then we can uh, find three Q, which will be like down here. So we can compute multiples of points. Which will of course just be, um, so if we have a natural number, then this will be just P plus N times. And we have, if we have minus N, times p, then this will just be minus p added to itself n times. <sighs> and as we know it from groups like z modulo mz, we can also find points here that may become the point at infinity after we add them to themselves several times, and we call them torsion points. I actually wrote down Silverman Tate 2.1. E is an elliptic curve, P is a point, and if there is a natural number such that m times p is the point at infinity, we call p a torsion point. And for the notation, uh, let's take large n, this will be the torsion points. And this will be all the torsion points. And so also here we sometimes um, don't really make a difference um, or sometimes it's not important um, whether we look at the rational points or all points. So the elliptic curve here is defined over Q, over the rational numbers, so A and B are rational numbers. But here at the moment we don't care 
uh, where the coefficients live. So there, they could just be algebraic numbers. And here also. So at some points, that will make a difference. And then if we want to consider just the coordinates uh, with the, the points with rational coordinates, then we will also write of Q here and also here. But here we just uh, want the kind of algebraic definition of this. So let's work with this. <coughs> Question is now, um, what are the possibilities for the torsion points? Let's first look at the two torsion. So when I draw elliptic curves, they either look like this or they look like this. And when I made uh, some examples of how to uh, add points to themselves, I sometimes also choose this point. And if we add this point to itself, we get the line. So here, 2p is the point at infinity. And those points are exactly the points that are at the points of order 2. So this is also a point of order 2, and this is a point of order two, and here this is a point of order two. So are those all uh, two torsion points? Uh, almost, because of course the two torsion <coughs> is uh, points of order two, Well, but also points of order dividing two. So it's also the point at infinity. So in this case, we have um, four points of order, uh, or four two torsion points. And in this case, we have two, namely this one and the point at infinity. And here we have those three and the point at infinity. And um, now what we can see from the picture, uh, but um, from some equations, but I think we will do that in the exercise lessons. So the question is now, um, those are of course also groups, because if we add two torsion points uh, to each other, then they will still be two torsion points. So the question is this. This then is of the form, uh, well, uh, here we have to make the difference because here we only look at the rational points. So here the group can only be this one. And here is the question, is it this or is it this? And yeah, we. Actually, we don't need the picture or the um, explicit formula for that. We only need to think a bit, but this will be on the exercise sheet. OK, so we almost um, found out what, wha what the two torsion points are or will in the exercise sheet. Question is now, what about the three torsion? Here we need a bit more. Um, explicit calculations, and we cannot read it off the 
picture anymore because yeah how could we think of a point that we add to itself three po three times and then we get the point at infinity yeah doesn't seem so easy so let's look at the equations what does it mean uh, to be a three torsion point it means 3p is the point at infinity also means 2p is minus p also means that the x coordinate of 2p is the x coordinate of minus p so let's remember minus p was just mirroring down the x axis so the x coordinate of minus p is the x coordinate of p and in the exercise lesson we uh, had a formula for that the doubling formula and uh, this is I would like this to go higher but yeah uh, exercise was that this is the following or we can also read that in the books so and of course p should just be x y and then this here is just x so we just uh, um, wiggle around this a bit put everything on one side and this is equivalent to 3x to the 4 plus 6ax squared plus 12bx minus a squared is 0 so what can we do with this what how does this help us the x coordinate of our point that is a three torsion point has to fulfill this condition this is a polynomial of order four so it can ha it has up to four roots or if we count them with multiplicity what we want to do because the points can could also be the same then we have four points not necessarily different four points but basically four points uh, four possibilities uh, for x and for every possibility for x we get of course two possibilities for y because y squared is x cubed plus x plus b or just this so for every x we get 2y so this is strange eight points a group with three torsion could maybe have order like three or multiple of three ah yeah but well we forgot the point at infinity itself because here we said the point that we want to look at has coordinates but of course we also have the point at infinity which also fulfills these conditions but doesn't have coordinates so don't forget the point at infinity so this <coughs> this little calculation shows us that the three torsion now not the rational points because we, we want to consider all there are nine well I put uh, quotation marks here because I say counted with multiplicity because a priori we don't know that uh, even if we if we allow um, all the uh, algebraic numbers we don't know that they're different 
So let me just write it like this. Later we will see what it actually is because we can actually <coughs> over Q bar say what it is. But they're up to nine. So, but what we can say is that the three torsion and also the rational three torsion, whoops, is a subgroup of either this or this, because those are the groups of order nine that we know. And again, as here, in the exercise sheet, you will have to think about which one it is and why. And to uh, determine which one it is, it's actually not necessary to know anything about, about anything. I, that's just, yeah. I just <laughs> I'm saying this <laughs> uh, and the the argument is probably easier than you would think um, so now we thought about torsion points in general but what we actually want to think about, what's also the title of Silverman and Tate's book, is rational points and rational torsion points. And we want to know, first of all, we want to know how uh, is the group structure of the elliptic curve in general as a group over the rationals. That will be maybe in, we will talk about that in like, three weeks, I think. But we also want to know um, uh, what's the group of the torsion points. And there we have two nice theorems that we want to work with. Okay, this is for the exercise. Yeah, again, a short repetition. Oh, I'm faster than I planned. <laughs> the discriminant if our elliptic curve looks like this then we call this the discriminant and we need it for our two theorems so the first one that we will actually try to prove a bit um, is the theorem of Lutz Nagel. We have an elliptic curve, we have its discriminant, and we have a torsion point. Which is not the point at infinity. Then x and y are integers, and 
either y is zero or y divides the discriminant. So this is uh, a really useful theorem because also it's only the one direction. Um, so the other way around, it's not true. If you have integer coefficients, it doesn't mean that it's a torsion point. There are points of infinite, infinite order with integer coefficients. Maybe we will talk about that this has nice applications in diophantine approximation. But the other way around here, if we have a torsion point, then it has integer coefficients. And in addition to that, either it's a uh, two torsion point, which is what this means, or uh, the y coordinate divides the discriminant. Why is it so nice if things are integers? Because then we can compute things with the computer. Because we don't, <coughs> if we have just rational points or real coordinates, then we need, um, we need to know how much precision is needed to compute things uh, properly. But if we only have integers, then we can just use a computer and write a finite algorithm that goes through all the divisors of the discriminant, which is usually like just a few, then test uh, the y's and find x's. So the algorithm now with this to find torsion points is um, find all the points with integer coefficients where either y is zero or y divides the discriminant, find out if x is also an integer, and then find out if the points are torsion points. Let me write that down. Well, compute the discriminant. <laughs> Find all uh, integers with y equals 0, or y divides the discriminant for all those y find integers x such that y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus b. And for um, for all those pairs x, y, Um, compute n times x comma y until either the coordinates are not integral anymore. Because if the coordinates get res become rational, then the resulting point cannot be a torsion point anymore. So it has finite order. So the point that we started with also has finite order. So either uh, until the coordinates are not integral anymore, or until n times x, y is the point at infinity. So this is almost an algorithm that we can feed to a computer. I say almost because it could be that this n becomes arbitrarily large. So maybe there are elliptic curves that have rational points, rational torsion points of order 100 million. But the next theorem tells us that this is not the case. 
And we, so, so this theorem, we will um, prove it or prove half of it. Uh, and uh, the whole proof is in the book. But the theorem that I will write down now is, I think it's a paper of 100 pages. So this we will not prove, yeah? Yeah, very good question, very good question. And I should have said that in the beginning. So if we, um, uh, we have our explicit formulas where we compute some, uh, compute the, the coordinates. And for example, um, where are my papers? For example, the doubling formula looks like Looks like this. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so this is the doubling formula. This is the x coordinate of two times p. Um, what happens now if we um, double a point of order two? So then we should we should get the point at infinity, but we don't know which coordinates does it have. Okay. We know a point of order two has uh, y coordinate zero, like this. <coughs> but x coordinate something. What happens now if we plug in our x from here and here? Um, we see if we factor out the four here, then we have here y squared. for y squared, but y squared is zero. So the resulting coordinates that we compute here is something divided by zero, and this something up here is not zero. So this is basically infinity. Of course, I can only say basically infinity because we didn't define it like that, but uh, whenever we see that we have to divide by zero, that the coordinate is something where you di divide by zero, then this will just be the point at infinity. And this, the same will happen if we just uh, add points to some other points. And when we get the point at infinity, it just happens that we have to divide by zero. And then we see, oh, this is the point at infinity. OK, the AI wants me to take a break. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we take a break of like five minutes and after that we will continue with, with Mazes, Mazes' theorem. <laughs>